So this has been my one and only electric unicycle for the past five months. And last week, all of a sudden, bang, the Z10 made its grand entrance. And if you haven't seen the unboxed video and want to see me gush all over this wheel, check out the link in the description below. So for this episode, I'm gonna learn to ride the Z10, give you my impression, and see if I got the right stuff. <laughs> And as always, if you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. As a proud father to the baby Z10, I can use all the love I can get. So new wheels means new wall bracket, right? Gotta keep it off the floor so Yuffie could do its thing. And given how heavy this wheel is, I'll need a pretty, oh my gosh, substantial wall bracket to get it on the wall, if the wall can actually hold it. Anyway. I'm guessing that you're not watching this to get decorated. You want to see the wheel in action. In that case, we gotta step out in the hallway. So this is where we started five months ago on the IPSI 5. I really didn't know how hard it would be for me to get used to this significantly larger and heavier 9 baht Z10, but as it turned out, it wasn't hard at all. There were some additional weight to Rango, but surprisingly, it wasn't hard at all to get the hang of low speed maneuvering on the Z10. The sand twisting technique works also, and after a quick 15 minute session, I felt ready to move on to the playground. Hey you! Come back here! Now here's where things get a little bit more interesting. Again, it was surprisingly easy to adapt to the Z10 from the IPSI 5 despite their huge differences. They are greater weight, but with it also comes stability even at lower speed. Even at a near walking pace, I found it easy to maneuver on the Z10, partly thanks to the additional ground clearance I have to work with. Now, given the lower speed and weight, the ride on the IPSI 5 is pretty linear. For the most part, it handles similarly at maximum speed as it does at a lower walking pace. You obviously wouldn't be able to make a sharp right turn, but the feel is consistent and predictable throughout its small band of speed range. The Z10 on the other hand, owing to its greater top speed, is a lot more dynamic and can feel very different as you start to get into and past the 15 to 20 miles per hour band. And I thought that I had it all figured out by the time I was ready to leave the playground and head to the Riverside Park. So keep in mind that I have never dealt with this type of speed on an electric unicycle. So some of the issues that I noticed and comments made in this uh, preview might be purely due to my lack of experience with the Z10 and not so much of an actual issue with a unicycle. So you have been disclaimed. Now anyone with a motorcycle would likely know about counter steering, which is exactly as it sounds, steering in the opposite direction you wish to go, and yes, that means you steer left to go right. Something 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 to do with curvature of the wheel, shortest path on a globe between two points, and body leans and so on. And you know what else is curved and lots of fun? No you weirdo, I mean the Z10! Now even in the motorcycle world, there are some disagreement as to how counter steering work. So of course, even less is likely known about how the dynamic of steering a monocycle work. By the way, did I mention I still don't know what to call these things? Anyhow, this is all a really long-winded way to explain how I felt about the ride of the Z10 once I got onto the Riverside Park and start practicing going at a greater speed. Turning felt tricky, but not in a way where you felt like you were fighting the wheel. Regardless of speed, the Z10 always felt consistent and reassuring. But rather, the challenge comes from having to master the physics of the median of riding a single wheel at speed. This is the best kind of challenge. Like snowboarding, where there is nothing between you and the mountain but a thin slice of wood, where it is more about reading the surfaces, feeling the wave, and letting gravity take over. Well, in this case, an 1800 watt motor.
Now, it isn't all frosting and cherries. There are the speed wobbles, which I had encountered on multiple occasions. It usually happened at speed greater than 22 miles per hour, doing accelerations when the wheel hit a bump at just the right angle. The wheels start oscillating back and forth, and as a motorcyclist, this is just about the scariest thing ever, as the death wobble, as it's known, on a motorcycle often leads to terrible accidents. So from talking to a few people, the wobble happens to all unicycle and with a little bit more experience, one is able to better control and limit its occurrences. Chris aka House of Job had mentioned that if you were to do a slight squat and shift your rear end and way to lean and carve on the scooter that you get a little bit more stability as well as help you with turning, um, I'm trying that. And on the chat, he also mentioned the importance of spreading out your feet and not clamp down on the wheel. I'm trying that as well, but it is a little bit scary to have the wheel float between your legs. I still instinctually want to have my calf touch the pads, usually on my right steering leg, but I'm beginning to see how spreading out more would give you a little bit more leverage and stability. So what do I think of the Z10 so far? Well, what do you think I was going to say? Getting to ride one is sort of like getting a date with that popular girl in your class. You're sort of just grateful having the chance to own and ride one of these things consider how difficult it is to get a hold of right currently. However, it does seem that its popularity and scarcity is somewhat justified. It is a solidly made, well-designed and engineered wheel from a manufacturer well-known for great product, seems willing to cut back on production in order to maintain their standard. From my limited experience so far, it is a well-made, consistent and surprisingly easy to learn wheel. These are the footage I shot on my first wheel ride after having the wheel for just two days. And remember, this is what I had before, the IPS i5. And I'm certainly not some kind of crazy prodigy in terms of learning how to ride an electric unicycle. So I doubt I'll change very many minds here. Those people who thought that the Z10 was too slow, too expensive, and the battery was too small, will probably still think so. But for those people who already have their minds set on getting or is about to get the Z10, boy, are you in for a treat. Well, that was it for now. Thanks again for watching. I'm sure I'm going to follow up with more videos on the 9Bot Z10. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and like the video. Until next time, thank you.